Hi, I'm your host, Dave Kemp, and this is Future Ear Radio. Each episode, we're breaking down one new thing, one cool new finding that's happening in the world of hearables, the world of voice technology. How are these worlds starting to intersect? How are these worlds starting to collide? What cool things are going to come from this intersection of technology? Without further ado, let's get on with the show. All right, so we're joined here today by Bradley Metrock. Bradley, tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do. Dave, thank you for having me on your show. I appreciate it. And uh, my name is Bradley Metrock. I'm CEO of a company called Score Publishing based in Nashville, Tennessee. We are not a normal publisher. (laughs) So we have done a number of things that have put us, you know, somewhere close to the center somewhere in the conversation of uh, what's happening with voice technology and the underlying AI underneath it. Um, Two and a half to three years ago, we started a podcast network called Voice First FM and have had a lot of success with that. Um, At this point in time, Voice First FM is listened to across 56 countries by hundreds of thousands of people, predominantly tech professionals. Uh, springing forth out of that has been what we call the Voice First Event Series. Um, we host a number of events around the United States. Next year, we'll expand overseas uh, with one of them. And um, those events often orbit different verticals. So looking at voice in the car, looking at voice in healthcare at Harvard Medical School, looking at voice at, in modern banking and finance uh, and many others. The capstone of that series is what we call Project Voice, which is the number one event for voice technology and AI in America, coming the week after CES. Uh, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and Samsung are all presenting sponsors of that, in addition to Mercedes-Benz, Mayo Clinic, and some others. And if anything interests you about voice technology whatsoever, uh, you should certainly check out projectvoice.ai, because you'd be, you'd find a lot uh, of, of value to you and an event that you should more than likely attend. Perfect. Well, yeah. So for everybody listening, you know, I've had some people ask me before, like, how did you get real involved with the, uh, the voice space? And the answer is largely Bradley and his network. Um, the first conference that I attended was the Alexa, back when it was called the Alexa conference, it's now been rebranded to Project Voice. Um, but I went to that two years ago in Chattanooga. I'll be going to my third one this year. Um, but it's just an awesome, I mean, Bradley is one of the biggest community leaders within the voice space. And it's just an awesome um, community that he's really helped to foster. And uh, I think that, you know, what's cool about you know, everything that he does is he has these affiliate podcasts as well, um, where he's bringing on the community. And so, you know, you're, you're constantly hearing people that you've met at these shows that are going on to the various podcasts weighing in. So you kind of are familiarizing yourself with who everybody is over the course of time. And I I just honestly think it's a really special thing that, that he's helped to foster. And so I wanted to bring him on as one of my first guests. Um, And so Bradley, why don't we talk a little bit about the evolution of project voice, you know, give us a little bit of background on like how this thing even began and what's transpired in the few years that you've been running this. Sure. So, um, with a lot of the work that we were doing with score publishing, uh, you know, my company back in 2015, 2016, we were working with a lot of cutting edge companies, a lot of forward thinking tech minded organizations. And, and I kept getting the question, what's up with Alexa? What's up with with voice, but specifically what's up with Alexa, especially mm-hmm. as we got into 2016. Mm-hmm. And um, my answer was the same. I don't know. And stop asking. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but people didn't, uh, they, they didn't uh, obey that and, and uh, kept asking. And, uh, you know, the more I found out about what Amazon was doing with Alexa, the more intrigued I became. And at that point in time, we had this this conference. Uh, we were doing a couple of other conferences. We had a big user community uh, that was cultivated around Apple's ecosystem and digital publishing within that ecosystem. And um, so we had this conference 
team and this apparatus. And I thought, you know what? What if we experiment with having an Alexa conference? Why don't we, you know, I, I found out a few different interesting use cases. This thing looks really intriguing. Mm. Uh, why don't we do this and just see who shows up? And so we held the first Alexa conference in early 2017, I believe, on the campus of Vanderbilt University. <laughs> and um, I was shocked at who attended. We, we didn't promote it all, you know, much at all. Uh, it was mm. sort of quiet. And yet we had people come from overseas to attend. And I was, I thought they were joking and they weren't. And, you know, it's just a good turnout and a lot of interesting people talking about interesting things. I thought, Okay, so this is how this is going to go. And, uh, you know, and so we, we then moved the Alexa conference to Chattanooga uh, because we run a different event called Digital Book World that's in Nashville. And we thought, you know, why don't we marry an emerging city with an emerging technology? And since then, you know, the Alexa conference grew um, quite a bit. And, uh, and it was time for that event to have a metamorphosis into a comprehensive, <clears throat> all-encompassing event for the voice space. And that's what we put together with Project Voice. And, and the other aspect of it, you know, something that is important about this is that with the rise of voice technology, with what Amazon really has has led the way you know provide a lot of leadership for um and you know now with what google and samsung microsoft and even you know what apple and many others are doing um everybody understands the optimism and the potential of the technology and so there's a real need and demand for an event like Project Voice that sort of avoids all the rainbows and unicorns mm -hmm. um, and instead focuses on the ground truth. What's worked? What hasn't worked? What should we be thinking about? What are, uh, what are the gaps in what's happened? You know, what is the truth about... Um, how the potential of the market and the potential of the technology is being met by what these technologists in these big companies and small companies are doing, because that's a conversation that ultimately will serve the most people the greatest. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're doing with Project Voice. And it's just going to be a real special uh, landmark kind of event. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I mean, I think that it's, it's kind of crazy. It's like, it's just seems to be growing at a, a faster and faster pace in terms of your conference, but also the technology. It's sort of like they're growing in unison. And, um, you know, I think it's interesting that this year, you know, it's obviously going to be more widely encompassing of Google and Samsung and Microsoft uh, and Apple, like you mentioned, um, with, you know, obviously still maintaining a, a large focus on what Amazon's doing. Um, but I think you made a really good point there, which is that I think a lot of the value that I've gotten from this is that a lot of the people that are attending this, um, while now you have, you know, representatives from all those major companies there as well, um, a lot of the people that are there are third party uh, type people where, you know, whether it be a developer or a designer um, or somebody that's just looking at this space out of intrigue. And so you really do get that ground truth that you alluded to there where it's, you know, it's people speaking candidly about the challenges. And I think that fosters a much better conversation because you confront a lot of the current things that are plaguing, you know, the des designers or the developers, and they're able to speak frankly about those challenges in a communal setting that I think is, it's a really positive thing. And, and I'm not sure if that exists all that much these days with is corporate is, um, you know, events tend to kind of become and be. And so I think what's so cool about yours is that you've managed to uh, bring in the, you know, the, the major platforms and representatives from them because they obviously have a lot of insight uh, that they can provide us all with. But while that's, you know, happening, you're also still maintaining and preserving that sort of indie vibe where it's the makers and it's the people that are actually 
building this stuff um, from a third party perspective. So what can we expect at this year's Project Voice? Uh, you know, um, you know, I, could, I guess I could answer that question in any number of ways. You can expect, first of all, a whole lot more people. There's going to be 3,000 plus attendees at Project Voice um, from 15 to 20 countries. It could be a little bit more than that, but um, it's just going to be large. Mm. And it, it's going to reflect um, you know, a lot of this community that has been cultivated around the technology, but it's also going to reflect a lot of new blood and new people coming into the space and, and wanting to learn and wanting to understand what's going on and, and in many cases wanting to, to be part of the community themselves. And, um, and so that's exciting to see mm -hmm. that, and mm -hmm. that we're attracting that um, and all of those sorts of things. Uh, we specifically create, you know, we've constructed Project Voice to juxtapose the major ecosystem side by side. So Tuesday, um, January the 14th is more tilted toward Amazon and the Alexa ecosystem. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't mean every talk is about that, it just means it's tilted toward the Alexa ecosystem. Uh, Wednesday, January the 15th is tilted toward Google Assistant and the Google ecosystem. And then Thursday, January the 16th is tilted towards Samsung and the Bixby ecosystem mm -hmm. with what we call the Voice World Fair running across the whole thing. And uh, the Voice World Fair is almost sold out. I think we were down to our very last booth, um, which uh, may end up getting sold today. So it's, it's, it's going to be um, exciting to see um, the companies and the products and services that are um, leading the way in, in the space uh, within that environment, uh, but also the program itself is uh, robust. Uh, there's a lot to it. Um, and uh, no matter what vantage point you're coming from, you know, what your role is, what type of company you're in, what sector you're in, what the size of your company is, <laughs> Uh, there's a lot to learn and there's a lot of great people to learn from. And uh, so the, the program aspect of it is really exciting too. And there's pre-conference workshops on Monday, which are interesting. There's uh, some trade association meetings, which are open to the public on Friday. You know, we expect those to be pretty lightly attended, but still they're open to the public. And, uh, you know, all in all, it's, it's going to be great. And, and uh, I guess the other thing I should mention is that, uh, and this is the email we've got coming out on, on uh, the Monday after Thanksgiving, is the, uh, the Project Voice Awards. So mm -hmm. the Project Voice Awards are going to be a big deal. We've got the finalists getting announced on uh, the week after Thanksgiving. And so, you know, the night of Wednesday, January the 15th, we have what we call the Project Voice Awards Gala which is two different things in one. It's announcing who, <clears throat> who won a bunch of awards. And, uh, and then the second half of it is going to be the roast of voicebot.ai's Brett Kinsella, <laughs> uh, which is going to be, uh, which is going to be fun as well. So, uh, and when I say fun, I mean fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm looking forward to that. That should be uh, definitely a highlight of the conference. I'm looking forward to that. And it sounds like it's going to be a really good show. I mean, you know, it's like uh, the difference in terms of the size from year one to year two, at least the ones that I went to was um, pretty dramatic. And it sounds like it's just going to grow by just as, you know, just as big of an increase this year as well. So it's really cool. I mean, it's like, you know, there's this really burgeoning group of people from literally all different backgrounds and, and walks of life. Um, so again, if anybody's listening to this and is at all interested, reach out because there's definitely, uh, you'll find value in going to the show. So as we wrap up here, Bradley, I just want to ask you, you know, as a community leader, somebody that's been really um, in touch and in tune with the overall sentiment of the voice community, you know, there's been some talk recently about like, are we entering into a cold winter with, you know, some of the different issues that are currently um, 
plaguing the, you know, the third party developers, particularly around like discoverability and monetization. And I get the sense that, you know, while I don't uh, necessarily feel as if things are, you know, like there's not a, a path inside or anything like that, I do get the sense that there might be a little bit of um, dejectedness a little bit. And, and I think it's only natural with a new technology, but I'm curious to ask you, like, what's your overall vibe right now with sort of the voice community? Sure. So, you know, it, it um, I definitely disagree it, for the most part that we're in some, anything I would call a trough of disillusionment. Mm -hmm. um, I think you can make that argument if you look specifically at the folks who are really on the vanguard, uh, the frontier of the frontier mm -hmm. uh, type, of, type of people and companies. I think if you look at the some aggregate picture of what's going on with voice, uh, the fact that over Black Friday and the holiday season, uh, smart speakers will continue to sell at a, a frighteningly robust <laughs> I know. Um, you know, I, nobody in any other industry would call that a trough of disillusionment. Um, you know, the, the growth and the Alexa skills uh, and the number of those that we've seen, uh, even despite people saying not enough has been done with monetization, not enough has been done with this, not enough has been done with that. Uh, there's still a lot of growth. Uh, nobody would call that a trough of disillusionment. Uh, where the challenges come is that, you know, there is, there is a growing sense that Alexa, Google Assistant, uh, Siri, Bixby, these things need to find that next gear. Mm -hmm. They need to find that next piece of functionality that um, opens up the user and the consumer's eyes to the fact that these will be dynamic ecosystems that change, that have more and more added value over time, and not just a, a radio replacement that, that happens to tell you the weather. Right. Uh, we ask rather than having to listen for it whenever the, it comes up on a show. So um, those things are in progress. You know, uh, those, I think 2020 will be a, a big year for um, some some key developments along those lines. And uh, all in all, it, this, the sense is that it, it's like it's like when you get married. It's like when, when the honeymoon, the honeymoon's worn off and now you're, you're living, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're, you're living together and you're, you, you know, you're, and you might've been living together before, but now you're living together and you're married and, um, you know, this reality sets in that, that when things don't go right, you have to find ways to make it work and you have to sort through issues collaboratively and, you know, you have to put your hard hat on and, and get some things done. And, you know, it's just, it feels like that to me for voice right now, uh, mm -hmm. that uh, we're in that, that, uh, that next step, um, you know, after the honeymoon and, uh, and we're working through it. And, and uh, uh, it's not a cause for any less optimism. It's just, it just looks a little bit different because um, it is different. Yeah, no, I think that's well said. And, and, you know, the interesting thing about all this is like, just like you said, you have this um, meteoric, uh, you know, proliferation of the devices themselves. And so it's such a weird sort of dichotomy that I don't know if I've ever really seen before, where it's like you have, you know, I think of them almost like Trojan horses, where you have all of these devices that are making their ways into people's homes. And, you know, whereas today they might be using them for one to five different things, whether it be timers or streaming music, whatever it might be. But I think that to your point, you know, there's a there's an education gap here. And I think over time, if it becomes um, if it becomes that it's more effective in the way in which people can um, learn the true utility of these devices that is just continuing to, to rise. I think that that's going to uh, really give way to people realizing, wow, I own this thing that is actually a far more capable device than I already own. So 
you know, in that sense, I think it is unique that these aren't new things that people have to go out and buy. They're already buying them. They already see enough value to own one. And some of that might be attributed to the price point. But I do think it is like a very, very unique situation where you have the proliferation that's already taking place. And so the next step is how do, you know, the platform providers make it so that it's easier to derive more utility? And then how do, you know, the third party folks make it so that they can, uh, expose people to, you know, the different things that they're building that you can use with these devices um, a little bit more effectively. So that's all I got this week. Um, thank you so much, Bradley, for hopping on here, joining me today, chatting with the audience. Uh, so to everybody out there, thanks for tuning in. We will chat with you next time. Cheers. Thank you, Dave. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Future Ear Radio. For more content like this, just head over to futureear.co where you can read all the articles that I've been writing these past few years on the worlds of voice technology and hearables and how the two are beginning to intersect. Thanks for tuning in and I'll chat with you next time.